The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Peter Johnson at realagriculture.com and we're back here at the Fallings Research Farm. So with me today, Joanna Fallings, uh, she's the cereal specialist with the Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs here in Ontario. And Joanna, you know, we did a whole bunch of drills here. Uh, we, we planted early September. We've been here a few times. We've seen all sorts of different cool things, but uniformity is the first thing that we were wondering about, jumps out at us. What do you got for us? So we're seeing lots of really cool things here actually. I'm standing here in the John Deere 1590 drill. It's a pretty good drill, but you can see there's still a little bit of variation in the staging uh, in this plot. However, where Peter's standing, we've got that Cedar Force technology and we've got a really nice uniform crop there. Yeah, so, so the, I mean, the Fallings drill is essentially the same drill as the drill that Middlesex Soil and Crop has with the difference that, well, the Middlesex Soil and Crop drill is a little newer, but that isn't really the difference. The difference is that we have cedar force on it from precision and all year we have yeah. seen a difference in controlling that hydraulic downforce on each gang. We don't have individual row by row, but all the way through, right, Joanna, we've seen this, this better uniformity and uniformity i mean gosh what what all does uniformity do for us Joanna? well the the reason and uniformity is so important and it's actually for right now for this timing which is what we're trying to do and that's time our t3 fungicide so we want all of these wheat heads at the exact same stage to get the optimal timing when we put that t3 fungicide on so where peter's standing we've got all those wheat heads at that perfect staging Whereas in some of these other stands, you know, there's a little bit of variation there. And really we would like to see all those tillers and those main stems a little bit closer together where the cedar force technology has been used. We're finding that those tillers and those main stems are a little bit closer together in staging, making it absolutely perfect for T3 fungicide applications. And not only that, if you look at the corn research, Man, if a corn plant comes up a day late, you lose about 4% in yield. We don't know if that's true in wheat, we don't. But man, I want every head to be uniform and big. And, and I mean, this is a massive wheat crop here. This is awesome wheat, but I'd like it to be perfectly awesome. And hopefully this is a little bit, you know, brings something more to the table. It's not the only thing we're doing here though. And we have another drill in here, Joanna, a sunflower yep. drill on 10 inch spacing. So tell us about that. So that's actually been one of the most interesting things to observe. So with the 10 inch row spacing, you've probably seen a few segments earlier on. We did not have canopy closure early on like we did with the seven and a half inch rows. So a lot of that sunlight was just going right down to the ground. We weren't getting the canopy capturing that solar energy and converting it into yield. But interesting enough, we're here today and you've got excellent canopy closure and you can't even tell the difference. So we don't know if there's gonna be a big yield difference. I still predict there will be, but the differences aren't quite as dramatic, dramatic as they were earlier on. Yeah, so what's the other thing that's so cool about that is that the 10 inch wheat is actually delayed in maturity. And why would it be delayed in maturity just because it's r wider row width? And I, I gotta get my brain there. I don't know that one. But the other part that I wanna add to this conversation is we planted this wheat ultra early, right? Yeah, this Joanna? was planted September 16th. So we are probably five or so days a little bit earlier than our normal window of September 20th to September 25th. So it was planted in really, really good time. But what happens if we would have planted it on October 5th? Or October, or October the 20th, 15th because 20th, yeah. we planted early and we had all sorts of tillering in the fall, really beautiful, like awesome growth in the fall. And so that 10 inch wheat was able to make a whole bunch of tillers. On October the 20th, when it didn't make any tillers, I think the story actually would have been different. But one other thing that we're doing here that, that I think is, is another piece of the puzzle, we're always looking at nutrients. And so 
from a nutrient standpoint, Joanna, what are we at? So here we looked at three different treatments. We looked at no phosphorus, uh, then we looked at MAP, and we also looked at MES. So we were going after that sulfur to see, does that added sulfur give us that extra boost in yield at the end of the day? And interesting enough here, we haven't noticed any differences in staging, no coloring differences. That doesn't mean there's gonna be no yield difference there, but right now we're just not picking anything up in these plots. Yep, and, it, and so who knows, maybe the no fertilizer will yield as much as the MAP and, and the MES. And, and uh, doesn't mean you don't need MAP or, or phosphorus, at least with your wheat seed. We've got lots of data yeah. to support that, but it is kind of interesting. So there you have it. We're going to be back here at Harvest. This is the Fallings Research Farm. It's way cool that Joanna's coming to the table and, and in, investigating all this new technology. Wait for it at Harvest. We'll tell you the yields. We'll find out what the answer is.